beautiful sacred roar circle family. Coming to you tonight for Free Flow Friday. My cat seem, seems to be fighting over there. If you hear cats, they're just playing. One's always unhappy. And the other one wants to play. And also he gets mad and he bites hard. So anyway, how is everyone doing? grateful to be able to show up here tonight in this group and share something just trusting into the free flow free flow Friday after all I am now back home I have arrived from Costa Rica into my sanctuary home hmm. so What I wanted to share tonight here with you, whenever you watch this, I invite you to, yeah, maybe just take a few moments. I would love to share with you this wisdom that lives in my heart. As a yogini, a yoga teacher, this myth is alive in my heart, in my life, in my practices. So this myth is of this incredible goddess energy and um, she is the divine feminine, Shakti. Um, Shakti means divine feminine energy or energy. Um, Shakti lives as a kundalini coiled in your tailbone, asleep. For the meantime or until it's awakened and so Shakti is that divine feminine energy and spe this specific um, divine feminine goddess um, is a Hindu goddess of protection and strength a fortress she's the flaming one she's the feminine who is power of love She's born out of a world's despair for a liberative source and force. She's the courage and the fierce confidence of knowing who we are, what we stand for. She is the source to defeat ego it's all happening within us. As a mystic, I love to imagine that I am all characters in every story, multidimensional being, and really reflect on all as a big picture, like as a tantra. Tantra is like the big understanding of all of life of light in the shadow and of all colors in between, multi-dimensional, multi-colored universe with all possible colors. <laughs> so this beautiful Hindu goddess or energy that lives within our hearts is known as Durga. She is the one who rides a tiger or a lion. I personally resonate with a tiger. Sometimes it's a lion, but most of the time it's a tiger. And a tiger represents strength and courage and will of power. That unapologetic self that stands up for knowing who you are against the ego mind or the demons in the ego. This is a mystery, this is a, a myth, and a myth of poetry, 
a way that you can feel into your own self and into the power that this beautiful Shakti, divine feminine energy can awaken and reveal in our lives. So Durga is that goddess who rides on a tiger or a lion into the battle, into the battle of our lives, into a daily ritual of what we're here to do in our lives as we align into our essence of being, of who we are. And we are being called to step forward into these battles and to harness the tiger or the lion as we bring through our strength and courage and bravery to awaken each morning with an intention and determination to fulfill that intention with divine action inspired by our personal practices and sadness, our studies, our personal time of meditation and contemplation and tuning within and away from the world as much as we can. And I understand that the world is here to disrupt all of that by what we must do in order to survive here on this planet Earth right now as human beings, having to go to work and, and provide for ourselves and our families. And there are also some of us who are here to inspire, who are here to guide and to help and assist to realign because it's not always easy to do it alone and it may not be something that you also have I want to say some people love to be guided some people love to receive the guidance from teachers for example like myself and I, myself, go to my teachers for these conscious um, myths and stories that awaken within us. And each one of us gets to awaken more and more through our actions and through our daily lives. <laughs> so as the Durga, beautiful goddess of, the, of protection and liberation, she's a fortress. She's like this cathedral or the sanctuary space, like a mother. She was born out of wars and despair on earth where there were demons and no one could defeat these demons. And one of those demons actually um, practiced yoga for all the wrong reasons. <laughs> there is a way actually to practice yoga for the wrong reasons. And his reasons were to become invincible so that he could be the destroyer of the world, so that he could take over. And so he practiced this, his yoga practice so diligently, which is that corruptive power, right? Power of ego within our own selves. All of this is happening within. You are every character in the story. And so this demon practiced yoga so diligently that he did earn the boon the boon means a gift of yoga. And the, he, he, this demon comes to the gods and he says, um, I have practiced yoga for this long. It's my turn to receive the boon. And so the gods give him the, ask him, what do you want? And he said, I want a gift of being invincible. And so of course the gods promise this boon and he receives this boon of being invincible. So this demon 
However, the gods tell him, we will give you this boon of being invincible. However, you must choose who will destroy you. And of course, this demon laughed and he was so disrespectful and he said, oh, no woman can ever destroy me. I choose a woman. And so the gods gave him this invincible boon and he became invincible and he started destroying the world and the earth and all the realms and he was about to destroy the whole universe when all the gods and all the beings gathered together in prayer to the great mother, to the goddess, with pleading for salvation from this demon that's about to take over, which is again our own minds, our ego mind that wants to take over our soul, our body, and make us forget about who we truly are. And so all the gods gathered and they projected out of their third eye into the center of the room their prayer to the goddess. And out of the center rises a beautiful woman with long luscious black hair. Her eyelashes are black and long. Her eyes are beautiful, soft, loving gaze. She's dressed in this red, beautiful dress, and she's magnificent. And she rises to be the warrior goddess, to remember her strength and power, to defeat the demons of the mind. Just like the Shakti who is asleep in the tailbone as a Kundalini rises and awakens up through the spine, through all the energy centers, unblocking all the old, rewriting the old stories, awakening the new potential in our DNA, awakening to what has been asleep for generations, because we are here rewriting the story and we are breaking the curses. I start Kundalini rising within each one of us. You don't have to be a male or female to experience this. And so this power of Durga is that courage required to defeat the demons of the ego mind, the stubborn mind, the mind that doubts, the mind that sabotages and Durga is also that energy that calls forth true community, true community and the sense of we belong to each other. We're not alone and we get to be together in this battles, in these battles and honor each other. So this beautiful goddess in her battles also opens up her third eye and out of this third eye emerge different other goddesses that ride by her side and support her, her fearless heart, bringing through the strange to face fear. One of those goddesses is Kali and we are all familiar with Kali and her power of love, the fertile love. And you know, not everyone will agree. And there will some people even say that Kali is demonic. And I have personally experienced that divine feminine energy. And I understand that that energy can also be crevice of humanity. Those are the demons of our minds. This is all consciousness. This is all mystery and, and myths and myth of poetry. Durga is fearlessness within us, right? It's our ability to rise in the face of adversity and then to realize our stubborn pride, stubborn ego, our pride, our self, inner self-critic or someone like the egotistic narcissist inside that keeps bypassing 
our ability to really show up in the world. Durga is that energy that cultivates strength from within when we feel all is lost. And she's also that energy of love in the heart. So Durga is the heart and the mind. Heart and the mind. The heart actually helps us recognize the limiting part, patterns, patterns of the mind. And also in the heart, we cultivate strength that is not angry. It's actually a sacred rage to battle and be victorious. Durga has a beautiful mantra. Om Dum Durga Yena Maha. Om Dum or Om Dam Durga Yena Maha. Om Dum Durga Yena Maha. Om Dum Durga Yena Namaha. And if you really think about it, Om Dum Durga Yena Maha. Om Dum Durga Yena Maha. This is almost like a language of the soul. Om Dum Durga Yena Maha. Om Dum Durga Yena Maha. It's a simple inner uh, salutation, a bow in reverence to that energy within that overcomes difficulties. Om Dum Durga Yena Maha. Om and salutations to that energy force that overcomes any difficulties. Om Dum Durga Yena Maha. It's calling on that power within you, unapologetic self, the warrioress energy and the graceful warrior. Graceful warrior that has that sort of discernment in her spine. It's it's this practice that came through me. You're pulling up through the spine, that sort of discernment, and really feeling into that energy of alignment. Really awakening within the strength and courage and sacred boundaries to protect yourself, your energy, your, your home, your body, your mind, your soul, all aspects, not just one, it's all aspects. If we want to feel whole, we cannot forget mind, body, and soul feeling in harmony, innermost power of the heart, peace, integrated being. <sighs> Mm. I will share one more thing about Durga, one more teaching, her mudra. Mudra means a hand gesture, hasta, hand, mudra, seal, or gesture. And uh, Durga mudra is one of my favorite mudras. I would say it's my, mm, my oracle mudra. I absolutely love it. It's a, it's called the gesture of the fearless heart, Abhaya Hridaya, and I will teach you how to do it with me. This mantra aligns the yogi to their deepest alignment and truth of the heart, to that fearless power within, the power of love to overcome the difficulties of the mind within our own selves. And as we do that, the external, we're able to withstand the external battles of our lives. And we are able to cultivate that power to connect to the heart space and create um, a resonant field between mind and heart and we're able to stay open and connected to the mind and also deeply rooted in the earth as the mother energy. 
rising from the earth as that power to stand up and rise for each other and for our own selves and to say no and no more to that which doesn't serve us so this beautiful mudra goes like this let's begin with our hands together and then cross your left wrist in front in front of the right hands back to back connect your pinky fingers this may be a little confusing but just bear with me pinky fingers and then do not cross your ring fingers now bring your middle fingers together and then index fingers together and then connect your ring finger and thumbs together so ring finger and thumb and then the other fingers can just barely cross and then bring this to the heart space this is called abhaya hridaya mudra abhaya means fearless hridaya means heart the center of the heart this mudra is a practice of its own. Hmm. So in temple body arts initiation just recently, we were given a, an integration prompt to create a 21 day sadhana. Sadhana means a personal practice. 21 day sadhana to your Ishta Devita. Ishta Devita means an, uh, a divine, divine feminine. For me, it was a, a mother energy of Sophia, Christ, Sophia, the feminine Christ, the Christed divine feminine. And she shows up in many faces. She has thousands of faces of the goddess of the divine feminine. And Durga is one of them as Shakti, Shiva and Shakti, the Hieros Gamos, the sacred marriage. Durga is that representation of the divine feminine mother as Sophia. And through this mudra, um, it really awakens the courage of that divine feminine goddess helps us settle the busy mind right the mind that often tends to run away or confuse us when we are disconnected from the heart space so this fearless heart actually helps us to stay connected so then release and you can just kind of open and close this mudra is like really good for the fingers for the joints of the fingers because it stretches and like really helps to for hands to be more limber so let's do the other side right hand in front of the left back to back pinkies hold on and then the middle finger leave your ring fingers alone index finger and then ring and thumbs together so yeah just however it happens bringing it to the heart this is the connection between mind heart and sternum sitting tall like as if you if you had a sort of discernment in the spine sitting tall om doom durgaye namaha om doom durgaye namaha om doom durgaye namaha calling upon that fearless heart to overcome any difficulties Om Dum Dukaye Namaha. Yeah, really feeling that energy of a divine feminine warrior to awaken, to awaken to that power that can destroy the demons. And so that demon that laughed and thought, oh, no woman can ever destroy me. I'm going to choose a woman as my destroyer for my invincible gift. Um, as Durga rises from the ground, she gathers all in her ten arms. She gathers all the tools that she needs, all the weapons 
that she needs to destroy the evil in the world. And she goes into this battle and rides her tiger, her courage and strength. And she destroys this demon. Even after he tries to hide from her and try to destroy her and attack her in any way and even calls her out on um, having help from other goddesses. And uh, he, uh, yeah, he calls her, says, it's not fair. You have these other goddesses by your side. And she says, I am alone in the world. And then these goddesses come back and emerge into her body. This is just her energy, her ability to be multidimensional and, and to be multifaceted energy from within us, no matter who you are. Mm. So in that moment, as she gathers herself back, all parts of herself, all parts of her goddess self, this is when we remember who we are and we call home all, all fragment parts of our, ourselves. And in that moment, she takes her spear and, and before she throws it into his throat, he looks at her and he sees the power of love, the power of love. And he calls out Ma in that deep reverence to the mother. And that ego mind dies. The ego mind dies to the love that we are in the heart, surrendering. I'm going to show you my little tiger. Here's my tiger that I ride. He's growing. I have another one, but this is one of them. <laughs> you know how our cats come back into our lives, um, or dogs. They come back into our life as cats and dogs from previous um from previous embodiment of some other animal that we needed in our lives. Wow, so yeah, this powerful Durga energy is alive. I am here teaching it on Sunday in the yoga teacher training, an open workshop for our local community. And it's a powerful energy in Ishta Devata. Powerful personal practice can be created around cultivating strength and power and bravery encourage and confidence to stand in the face of adversity, to stand in the fire, to breathe fire, to dance in the field, to slash away the, the ego mind, the demons. And we want to make peace with mind because mind truly is awareness. Our mind is awareness. Shiva, Shiva that lives up here. He is pure consciousness and awareness. And in one of the stories, Durga actually represents Parvati and Shiva is asleep on the mountain. And this is a completely other story, but just to bring a little awareness to understanding what it means, Shiva as the consciousness and awareness often will go in, onto the mountain to grieve to grieve and process and meditate and fall asleep for eons. And only her power, the Shakti power of devotion and practices can come and, and awaken him so that he can return and remember his true self, his true self that is not ego mind, but the awareness and the consciousness. And ego then becomes in service to consciousness and becomes the awareness and the help in the face of fear or adversity rather than a saboteur. So practicing with Durga energy helps us to understand and cultivate that truth and love between heart and mind in this pathway that helps us to be the mystery and be the mystic in our lifetime and use these stories and myths and myth of poetry to guide our life path no matter what we do 
So that's the message for Free Flow Friday. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you. I'm just really inspired to teach this now and to create more. So much love to you all. Om Dum Durga Ye Namaha. So I will be practicing this for 21 days to really feel and embody the strength of Durga, that energy of protection, fierce love, power of love, to be the mirror of love no matter what I face. Mm. Blessed be Om Shanti Om, always dedicating all of my teachings and practices to the benefit of all living beings. Loka Samasta Sukhino Bhavantu. Om Shanti Om. Peace to all. Namaste.